you can see, we now have uh, all three lights on the lighting panel activated, not just the ground fault lights, but also the main light to actually illuminate the whole thing. Uh, and we have something else rather than vehicle here. We have our rotary phase converter with a made of two main components. This is a pony motor to start the thing running, getting up to speed. Then we have a uh, three phase induction motor that is being fed single phase and it's generating a B phase on induction. So we can run any three phase equipment that we so need. Yeah, it's a 20, 20 horsepower yeah, 20 output horsepower. rating. Yep. So the starting of it is pretty simple. We have these two switches here wired in to do it. That's all you really need. To start it, you start the pony motor. The device starts to spin. This motor brings up the speed. That's operational speed. Now what you do is you line in the phase, pull out the pony motor. Now the three phase motor is being fed with single phase off the single phase lines, uh, which each have their own sine wave on it as it's a uh, three wire system. The B phase is being generated and that is all supplied to the various three phase that we're making power. We have these old series lights. I believe these were uh, from the subways. Yeah, five lights on 600 volts railroad power, probably. We have it chopped down to just two for right now. We've had most of the bypass. This is uh, two, two 120 lamps in series for 240. Yep. So this is A to two, C yep, on the these power two grid. We have grid line already connected, so if I touch these two together. Yep, that's A yeah, to C. Okay. Now, this B phase is not connected to anything on the grid. If I tuck this to A, and this to B. B to A is 240 volts. We get power. Yep. It's and not then quite steady just with my hands, but there we go. And then B to C. And it works there as well. Yep. So we've got we don't have any phase imbalances. We've got the same basic bulb brightness. Yep. So we know we're within a few volts of being balanced on all three Pretty phases. Much. And so that basically means we have three phase now to play with on the single phase. Uh, yes, yeah, so now, now we can run equipment over there like that pump and other various three phase things. And uh, I mean, we need steam to run that, but that's a whole different can of worms. Well, we might get also need three phase to run a portable boiler. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll, yes, we will need three phase to run a portable boiler because the burner control setups quite often the. The two-stage oil burners have uh, impeller motors that are three-phase. The the feed water pumps can be three-phase, stuff like that. And we've got uh, we just finished doing a, a steam line steam flange modification for hookup to a steam line two said portable that goes out the door here. Uh, and we're working on another steam connection, is what this uh, this pipe standing up there. That steam connection is going to take steam from the main line and put it where it never went before, uh, through these gallery pipes, down the stairs. And uh, when it gets downstairs, it's going to arrive basically next to the condenser. And on the condenser, we're going to have a wet air pump, which will be steam driven, and a cooling water pump, which will be steam driven. Uh, we can show you what that pump looks like in just a minute. There's not much to uh, do to lining it out. It's basically just shutting it off. Here, idle down there. See it. There's a lot of momentum, so it comes down quite slowly. Yeah, well, it's it's that part of the reason that giant pulley was left on there is because the more inertia you have on a phase converter or an MG, the better. Yeah. So this switch, you might be looking at it and saying it's a little odd. This is a more conventional knife switch, uh, same which we'll have on that little lighting panel, and it's just the two pieces of copper that clip up into there. So what's all this then? Well. These are smaller, basically little leaves in there, I think it's a proper term, that are hinged in the back here, and there is a spring on either side. When this is pulled out, if you were looking closely in the video, you might have noticed that those lagged behind. Obviously, the upper elements are spun, they're kind of like this, so that when you put a switch in, they spread out a little bit, and they make good contact. What this means is that when you pull it out, you feel a little bit of physical drag. 
These are going to drag behind because they're not fully connected. They're hinged and they're sprung. They hang up in there for just a second longer before they reach the end of the spring travel, and then they snap forward. So the whole point of that, and it seems like quite a complicated thing. Here, we can demonstrate it. If you, if you start it spinning again with the pony motor, you can line it in and then, and then pull it out part way. And, we can do that. Yeah. I'll explain it while we go. The, um, basically what that switch is for, it's kind of out of its element here because it's not really intended for AC use, so there's nothing wrong with using it for alternating Actually, it's, it's got DC and AC ratings. 250 volt at, at a certain amperage number DC and 500 volt at the same amperage AC. Correct. Now, when I pull those out, you'll see them lag behind. Yeah, I'll do it slowly. They'll still spring out. Yeah, you see that? You see there's a little bit of an arc there not much, but if there hadn't been that there, that arc would have been a bit bigger, it would have been drawn out more. On AC... That's where you have to throw all switches that are not equipped with those abruptly. You should really yes. throw any of them abruptly. Yes. But that on AC is not such a huge deal. On direct current, it is. Mm. Uh, the reasons for it are very complicated and it will probably take me about half an hour to explain, but suffice to say, in a DC switch, you want to be able to have it disconnect very quickly if possible, quicker than the human hand can do it. Yeah, and, and you, they also tend to have arc shoots. Yes. The point of those is to make that very quick disconnection and keep you from arcing, as that arc would not only be a hazard to anyone whose hand is here, it would also melt a lot of the copper in there. This, by the way, here is all the piping work we've been doing to get up into <laughs> the... Uh, I don't think I can see it with this thing. Well, I have my light with me. All right. We have something here that we've called the moon due to all the craters and stuff on it. Yeah, that is that is pretty much the moon, because if you look at it well, from straight on, there's no there's no real coherent layout to the pipe work that goes into the thing. It's just sort of random intervals and sizes and distances apart, and they're a lot like the moon craters. Yep. The obvious reason for those dogs uh, holding the lid on is because if it is the moon, of course, if it wasn't held there, it would just fly magnetically back up to its orbit in the sky, because that's, I mean, that's obviously how that's things, how, physics works. How, yes. how they work, so. Anyway. So this is probably going to be our condenser cooling water pump. This, uh, this brand new, very, very pretty Ingersoll Rand Simplex fire sprinkler pump. Yeah. Because steam is better than electricity. As far as we know, this has never actually been used. No, we can fix that. We can fix that. This will more than easily cope with the, uh, the demands for cooling water. Oh, say hello to our wet air pump. Yes, yeah, so this here is going to be the wet air pump. This this duplex right here. Uh, it's a fairly sizable one. Not too big, not too small. My foot will uh, demonstrate that for you. Um, unfortunately, it has a feed end, not a transfer end, meaning that the wet end pistons are smaller in diameter than the steam pistons, which means that, you know, we're not trying to feed a boiler. It won't be as efficient, but... Um, it's, it's a wet air pump and it has to fight a vacuum. It has to draw water out of the condenser against a hopefully vacuumized condenser condition. So, Ash pots. Okay, here, here are our plungers. Aren't they so pretty? Yes, they are, and, but more importantly, they are actually they are actually, they are lathe trued and then they were hand scraped after the fact. It was done by an extremely competent individual by the name of Bill Hazard, who's been helping us with a lot of uh, this rebuild extremely work. Extremely competent is an understatement. Yeah, he's, uh, he's quite a guy. So we have HP and IP. The yes. LPs are still out. These are the HP pots, these are the IPs. The, L the LPs are actually about, uh, only about five minutes drive from here getting brazed back together. Those will be going right up there. That's right. The giant thing. The giant hanging cast iron thing. Are you looking forward to putting those back in? I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not either. I think my back is going to be informing me how much it suffers. So, that's, that's the story. Uh, my friend and I have to go operate a tape measure and uh, hopefully not hurt ourselves. It is a dangerous job. You have to wear your safety vest and your hard hats and your and your uh, safety your, your goggles, safety your hazmat suit, vest, radiation suit, and your and your hard mask. hat and your hard hat and your other hard hat and your and, and your fourth 15, safety vest and and you also need like the uh, safety glasses, the face shield, the welding and a straight jacket and a straight jacket. 
Um, and for your oh, and we and you have to put those little red flashing lights around your yes. work area. Every yeah. Every square inch. But the problem is you have to measure every square. inch. You have to measure it to measure make sure itself. the lights are the correct distance apart. But itself, that tape measure also needs those flashing lights for itself. Yes. So the eternal loop of tape measure. It's it's a problem that look the overhead is making this project cost three million dollars per second. Per second. Uh, per so se per it's second per second. It's that exponential. It's it's an exponential. Yeah. It's. Um, it's very bad. It, it's scary. We need help. Um, please send us many things. Kidneys, we could sell. Yeah, those. kidneys are. Uh, kidneys they 